In this video, we're going to cover hardware descriptive language, very commonly referred to as HDL. Um, basically, it's a replacement for doing schematics and drawing gates and connecting the gates to accomplish a digital, to finish a digital design or, uh, or, or even a broader design. Um, so instead of doing that, we have ways of being able to uh, either describe block diagrams or write a description called code, description code, description of the circuits we want to design. And then we can put them all together, compile them together. And then at that point, we will be able to simulate and verify the design without ever having to do, um, having to do the schematic and this, uh, designing it. So this, this part of the process is referred to as the front end. And most of the designers, basically designers job is to either uh, and either use hierarchy block diagram or describe their circuit in, in, uh, in, lang in the HDL hardware descriptive language. Or even you can use in some sy systems, you can even use a state diagram to, to, to describe what you want to design and then put it all together. Um, and then uh, you are able to simulate it to make sure that your design is correct. This is what you do front end. You can do it on your computer at your desk. And then when you're finished, there is a whole group of people, Xilinx being one of the kind of on the frontier of these, um, that you can send it to these companies and they are able to build your circuit and then bring the chip back to you. And that part of the process is referred to as the back end. So the designer sits in the front end making a design and there's a whole number of vendors on the back end that uh, produce, the, produce the device for you. Now, hardware descriptive language is just what happens. Instead of drawing the schematic, you're basically describing your circuit in one way or the other. Uh, there are two competing um, solutions out there. One solution is referred to as Verilog. And another solution is referred to as VHDL. Um, this is very more C-like in, in the construct and how they do it. And this one is more ADA-like. ADA, some of you may have heard of this. And this is more C-like. Okay. Uh, as far as popularity is concerned, in general, wear logs are just a little bit more uh, popular, popular at this time. Uh, they both have significant significant portion of the market and in educational institutions and other places you will notice that they're taught just about equally. Half, half the places focus on Verilog, half the places look on VHDL. As far as, as far as the process we just described here with the front end steps and the back end step, both of these follow the same process. And even, even uh, structurally, the two are relatively similar to each other. In our case uh, here, we're gonna focus on Verilog from here on. And then uh, these languages are interesting. If you really want to do what we did with schematic, for example, you wanna lay out the gates and you wanna connect all of those together, that process is referred to as gate level. Uh, there's really not much advantage using Verilog uh, over, drawing a schematic or putting the gates together if you want to do it at gate level. Um, that's the lowest level and yes you can do that. Sometimes we need to do the design because we do not want the computer to generate this underlying circuitry in terms of gates but we rather want to force uh, a certain type of connection between the various gates that goes on. The other part is called RTL or register level RTL or which stands for register transfer level and and in this case uh, rtl describes the circuit using operation and transfer of diff data between registers uh, and that's great that's a level more a little higher level than gate level but still not where we want to be where we want to be is we want to be able to design as much of the circuit as possible using what's called the behavioral, um, the behavioral level design. And the behavioral level design, it basically says, hey, um, uh, 
this is this is this is what I want done. Um, and describe the things in terms of the concurrent algorithms and circuit behavior and really don't specify specifically what kind of hardware it really should be and, uh, and the, during the compilation the computer uses the descriptive language the Verilog descript description of the design and generate the specific gates and everything that is needed to build that circuit okay so so for the rest for the rest of these video series we're going to focus on Verilog as much as possible. We're going to focus on behavioral level design. Now, once in a while, if we, if we need specific way the data should flow or a specific gates, they got to be used because of compatibility or some other issue, we will fall back into RTL and gate level. But as much as possible, we want to stay at the behavioral level because what that does for us allows us to um, describe much complex circuits um, the, that way. Let's go ahead and take a minute and talk about uh, what, what, a, what the code looks like, what a um, description of a circuit look like. Let's start with something re re relatively simple. Let's go ahead and talk about the flip-flop or something like that. So the, the code, the Verilog code, will have two pieces. One piece would be more or less a system diagram. Uh, if you recall what the system diagram was, uh, here is where we're going to define the module. A module is what the component is called. And uh, in the system diagram, we're going to define the inputs and outputs of the system. Okay really did don't describe how the inputs and outputs are related to each other or what happens. There is another section, which is the activity section, the section that performs the function, whatever, whatever the function is that we, this, uh, this module is supposed to do that. So, so with the D flip-flop module, for example, in the system diagram, we will define that it's got an input, it's got an output, D and Q, and we have a clock. And here is gonna basically describe that on a rising edge clock, the Q becomes equal to D. So that happens, so, so basically every, every, every module you design, regardless of what it is, is gonna have these two pieces. One describing what the inputs and outputs are, the other one describing what the function is. Let's go ahead and take a minute and use an application to actually write the code so we can actually take a look at it. Now, <clears throat> there are many good solutions out there. The one we're going to use is from a company called Aldec uh, for, for the demos here. And the product is called Active HDL. So you can go to aldec.com, their website, and got, get active HDL. They have a student version, which is free if you wanted to practice with it. And then, of course, they have a professional level if that's what you're looking for as well. Uh, so we're going to use the student version to demonstrate this, uh, this, product, this Verilog. And uh, we're going to use active, uh, Aldex, Aldex Active HDL solution. Okay, now we are looking at Aldex Active HDL solution. And in here, um, as you can see on the screen, I have brought it up. And all I see, I started it up. And the first thing it asks me what you want to do for this case, we're going to basically says create a new workspace. Um, and then the next was just going to say, okay. And then here, we're going to give it a name. And for lack of better name, we're going to use design zero. And it's going to save it. You can, of course, use the browse to change the directory where you want your workspace to be saved. Workspace is basically where you can put multiple projects in a single workspace. If you're creating a brand new workspace, when for every project we're going to do, we're going to create, in this case, we're going to create a workspace. But you could put multiple projects in a workspace if you choose to. So say OK. 
and then it's asking me do you want to use me don't have any resources to use so we're just going to say no just create an empty design for me at this point and then we say next okay now here is where the synthesis tools are and i could be there's a whole bunch of these are the various companies uh, that make uh, parts based on what we do lattice is one actel is one quick logic is another one xilink is another one there's a whole slew of these folks who do different and these are the different synthesis tools you have to down, download uh, for them to do it in our case we really don't need anything because we're not going to build this but if you wanted to do that then you have to download the implementation tool as for a specific part that you're going to use to design with for our case we just basically said let's go ahead and use Verilog because that's the language we want to use and then uh, we're really are not going to use any schematic or anything we're just going to use the default HDL language which in this case is Verilog for us and then we say next uh, got to give our design a name it's a lack of creativity we're going to call it design zero and again we can change the directory it is, in, it is in but right now i'm going to leave it as a default and then that's great and then we say okay finish it and then it goes and does a little bit of work and then it'll come back and give us a number of options here uh, and we can take any of these options to run with it you, know, you can use a block diagram if you have a bunch of components you've already either purchased or built yourself you can use this b DE to put it together you can draw a state uh, machine a state diagram and let that be your design in this case we're going to uh, select uh, HD which is basically we're going to say we're going to write the Verilog code to describe our circuit this is very nice it lets us to do the first part of the design going through it let's say we were talking about doing a D flip flop so we say okay let's go ahead and generate the design uh, we so to type the name of the source file the name of the source file we can say it's D flip flop that's what we are creating and then it asks you what do you want to call this module sometimes you might have multiple modules in a single file in this case we're just going to have dav1 and we're going to call it the flip flop okay so now we got a module created then we say next okay now it says all right, what are the inputs? Here is where you put the ports. Ports are another name for inputs and outputs. This is where you're doing a system diagram. The flip-flop is gonna have a D. It's, we're gonna click on new, then we're gonna say D. Yep, I've got a D input coming in. Then I'm gonna have another one, which is gonna be clock. So I got a clock coming in, and then I'm gonna have a Q going out, okay, as an output. So we're just gonna call that one output. Let's click on the out there is an in and out sometime you might have like an address bus uh, sorry the data buses uh, on a memory chip or something that we might want it to be in and out in our case we do a D flip-flop which is all gonna queue and queue is always output okay great just say finished and if you can if you can see up here you'll see that it gives us uh, the title uh, some comments tells us what was generated it comes down here and it gives us what the input we put in there uh, what kind of input we are bringing in because we're going to have two kinds that mainly we use wire means I, I'm not going to remember what comes in I, I, I'm just going to look at it at the moment when I need it I'm not going to store it away or we're going to have registered and usually the output is good idea to make the output be a register okay reg which means i'm going to have memory and i'm going to remember what you put in there and then and then here as you can see uh, at the bottom of the screen it tells you it, 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 end of the automatically maintained section here's the first block and then the second block is when we write it there are many different ways of doing this one of the useful construct is called always and always at clock so basically it says uh, just go ahead and execute this one always when well let's call it positive edge so you just type positive edge clock oops not clock clock 
and then so what happens is that this block gets executed every time you have a rising edge clock and you have to these things have to start with begin begin and end and since this is a flip-flop flip-flop is a very easy thing all I have to say is that the uh, the Q Q is equal to D that's it okay um, and and uh, we can do it that way in this case it really doesn't really matter much but tip this is there are two kinds of assignment for this for now we, we have later videos that talk about blocking and non-blocking um, assignment for sequential logic we always like to use blocking um, or non-blocks or non-blocking um, um, assignments so this basically takes d and puts it in q only when the clock has a positive edge okay um, so all we have to do is compile it with this button up here does the compile compile everything and it yeah, and it will tell me that there's a, on the bottom of the screen which you don't can't see it's got a little broly bar which basically tells me um, if I have any errors or not okay and then uh, the next thing is simulation which basically I want to know whether this works or not and then all I have to do you just go to simulation you say okay initialize my simulation and say okay that looks good it's very lock so it's just okay okay and then and then all you need to do is you can click on these new waves if you like it creates a new wave